Blanche, I'm ready. Okay, so you're painting Abby today, huh? I'm doing Abby, I'm doing Abby. I'm walking over and doing Abby. Well, I'm standing right here where I'm at. I'm in South Ogden. Anyway, I knew Abby from my father-in-law. And my father-in-law was kind of this pseudo-artist. I mean, I don't know what they were. But anyway, they drank like animals. You know, they were all hardcore alcoholics. But they were very conscious people. And uh, I used to hang around with those guys did when I was like in my early 20s. I was an uh, honor student at the U with, uh, and Stegner was one of my professors, and I was in that little group, and they were very, they were hardcore environmentalists, but he was the hardcore of the hardcore. I think a lot of people don't know about him is without Wallace Stegner taking a chance on him, no one would even know who he is. He, you know, Stegner was the uh, dean at the Stanford writing guild, you know, the legendary guild of writers, and he took a chance on him, and I think a Abby worked on his master dissertation for 20-something years, never finished it. You know, Carol Gallagher says to me all the time, because she knew them both well, too, and she says, Kevin, when are you going to finish that book? And I says, God, I'm going to break Abby's record, I think. But The Guardian did this beautiful article on Abby did a while back, and it said, he went from the landscape to the library his whole life. Well, that's what I've done my whole life. I've spent my whole life in our university library, and you see, I'm, I'm outside all the time. I'm never inside. By the way, today is the first day that it's rained here in over 100 days. But he, you know, as far as the man, he, he was the sort of the earth guy who he could write like no other but. He got it that this soft environmental movement that was starting to happen clear back then. They were trying to hijack it, well, not hijack it. This, you know, I think it ties really into where Bobby Kennedy was killed and the Democratic Party split in the United States and they went from progressives to liberals. People forget that the left in this country were meaner than fuck. The Bobby Kennedys, the Germans, you know, all of them, they were fucking hardcore fuckers, mean. And then the soft took it, and when they took it, they took the environmental moment with them. And Abby was a counter to that. Now, Abby, when he wrote the Monkey Wrench game, it was required reading in Utah in the seventh grade. It was required. If he wrote that book today, he would be charged as an eco-terrorist and be put in Supermax. I don't know if anybody, and my favorite character in there is, you know, is uh, Selvin C. Smith, he was a Mormon who would try to pray that, you know, Hoover Dam. But the university that I hang around at, our university, it was the university that out of Utah Construction who built Hoover Dam. So Abby in his book said he wanted to blow it up, you know, over and over and over. But he was an amazing, brilliant, brilliant man. You look at his quotes, you look at his, I mean, read his books. I mean, wow. But, you know, he, he was a hardcore alcoholic, but the greatest story ever of Abby is his death. This group of friends, and I knew these guys, they were countercultures hardcore, including my ex father in law. They were brilliant men. And they were all artists in their own way. And they were all people that were connected with the earth. I mean, they were construction workers and flashers, a lot of them were rock masons, and, you know, they were, they were, they were in symphony with the environment in a hardcore, I mean, they were hunters. They were, you know, they, these dudes were so, I had this great picture of Abby with this old beat up 1970 Ford truck with a front end freaking K. That's what he drove around. I think he was married six or seven times, but when he died, you know, he wanted nothing about this fucking embalming and this whole fucking thing. You know, it, it gets so much deeper than that, what he was about, but his friends, they wanted him up in a, sleeping bag. They took him to the Sonora. By the way, anybody who's ever, ended, ever been to the Sonora in Tucson, the, the desert out there, well, that's what people say, think he is. Who knows where he's at? They loaded him up in these freaking in a sleeping bag. He just dug a hole, put him in the earth, and then got drunk over his body, you know, so they, he asked them to do it, and they did it. They did it. 
you know, my father in law's name was Mad, he says, like, you know, and he was the same way. He says, when I die, just put me right over here in this orchard grove that my great grandfather's planted and just put in marks that here's Mad, he's dead. And that's the way they were. I mean, there was a lot of Utahns that were that way. A lot of Utahns lived that way and they were hardcore environmentalists. They took no shit. And if fuckers tried to slash them something down their throat, they fought it. They fought it like a war. I mean, they, they considered it a war. You know, Abby considered it a war. It is a fucking war. And he hated the soft fucking free huggers. I mean, he, he fucking hated them with a fucking passion. He was real. I mean, that guy was so real. You know, everybody should read that book. It's like, I did that thing at the wall where I took the ball of Kid to Christopher, which is one of my best pieces of art I ever did. And I jump over down that shirt that I have on. That's one of Abby's shirts. That's one of the characters out of that book. You know, that's the old ex nom These were guys who were all, they were usually all old Korean War guys and all ex nom guys. You know, a lot of them had, they can pop by from the Hell's Kitchen, their toes were missing, you know. This was the type of guys that they understood that war was a fucking scam, that the American, it, you know, nuclear movement was nothing but profit, or, you know, a death for profit, just like war. They got it. They fucking got it. He was the king. He was the top of it because he, he could write. And, you know, the thing is, they all wrote. This whole group of alcoholics, you know, and they were all alcoholics. People considered that odd. Know, they were just trust me, they were alcoholics. And you know, for some very good reasons, but they all wrote, they all wrote poetry, they all fucking wrote, they all painted in their own way. They were all amazing, and they were, a lot of them were rock masons, builders. He was an amazing dude. I tell my daughters when I was in the hospital full of leukemia, I said, listen, I still have the quilt that my grandmother, the Mormon women make these quilts, I still have that quilt from when I was seven, my grandma gave it to me. I still have it. I still sleep in it. And I said, just wrap me up in that quilt and put me here, over here by the edge of the lake, by the marshes, you know, where the blue herons are at, and the ducks and the geese. So, but what colors are you using today? Well, I, I'm, I'm working with uh, a black and a blue, and uh, I want to get the uh, a yellow in it as well. It's the, uh, the black, blue, and the yellow. Oh, yeah. That's a great combination of colors for him. I think that would say so much about him. You know, he even even go further than nuclearism. He was the predecessor. You think about even I mean, those guys, you think about what they were back then, they were anti dams. They, they they were hardcore anti hydroelectric. You know, they loved the Colorado. I mean Stegner and here our governor in Utah, I call him Dirty Herbie, is trying to put through a nuclear plant on the green. I mean, that was Abby and Stegner's and, you know, Udall. I always say, where the fuck are his two nephews? They're both United States senators. They love the fucking Colorado on the green. He's trying to put a nuclear plant on it. Oh, if they were alive today, if Stegner was alive, if Abby was alive today, oh, fuck, I can imagine. He'd end up in a prison cell, I'm sure. I mean, you think about the things that we did is in the 70s and the 80s, we fought back. And it was accepted to fight back. We right. allow these fucking pricks to make it unacceptable to fight back. Things that Americans have always done, they have always fought back. That's, we fought against the Queen, the Revolutionary War, you know, used terrorists. I mean, the East India Company, I call the East India Company Walmart. That's what Walmart is. Walmart's the East India Company. That's, you know, that's what the Boston Tea Party is. So it was a, there was nothing more American than to fight back to fight back intensely on these fucking monsters. Via the kidnapping of the progressive movement and the liberals went so soft and, you know, that right wing hairspray, I'm God, I'm God, using Jesus, and lying motherfuckers. I thought it was existed, but we fought them. Well, what happened to the other side? I mean, our forefathers developed a beautiful two-party system, but we don't have a two-party system because we don't fight back. It was, set, it, it was built to fight back. And so the liberals have become, the, we've been led to the soft tree huggers. Can you imagine, Abby? Can you imagine when somebody walking up to that fucker and saying you're a soft tree hugger? He cracked you across the face with a whiskey bottle. Okay, listen to me. I, I, I'm, I'm listening to you talk about this, 
And I'm thinking about the Braveheart idea. I just realized that, you know, the Braveheart thing was all about the blue, you know, that blue face thing? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm just yeah, gonna... I didn't even think of that. You're right. You yeah. know, 700 years ago, too, right where I'm standing, that mountain, Ben Lomond Peak, you know, that's the Scottish mountain. Mariner named it. It all ties back to Scotland so much of this fact. And William Wallace was a real man. And you know what's ironic you bring that up? The guy that I'm talking about, my ex-father and I, you know who his name was? What? His middle name was Wallace. And you know he was related bloodlines to William Wallace? My my, my girls are right out of William Wallace's bloodline, not my, not, you know, that's my wife. She, they're related to William Wallace, so that's ironic that you bring that up. And I didn't think about that food face, so get on to it. That's brilliant. Totally That's, want to it. Okay, so I, I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it on that one. I've got the blue and the black. Wow, how beautiful. And then you go to the yellow, you know. What, you going to do the hat yellow, you say, you think? The what? You got his hat on him? I got the hat on him, yeah. I, uh, and I, I want to do the hat in the yellow. What do you think? Yeah, because, I mean, we need, like I said, that... I think that you're right, you got it, and because you got the blue and the black, and then the yellow is so nuclear. But you, another thing, too, about him, he loved flowers, and he loved wildflowers. A lot of people don't know about that. Think about this. There's one, you know, you go back to Van Gogh and the yellow sunflowers, you know, you got to realize how worshipped flowers were in Holland in those days. They were the currency, and, you know, he, he counted with it. What is the only natural plant on Earth that actually eats? man-made nuclear fallout out of the atmosphere. Sunflowers, yellow, black and yellow. I mean, it's so irony that the nuclear industry, what they've done with those colors and to sit back right in their face, you know, the bumblebee and the, and the, the sunflower. You know, so the that's yellow the color that I've been using. The, the I yellow, love those colors. The yellow is the most difficult color to paint. I find the most difficult color to paint is the yellow. And uh, there are very few oh. artists. Van Gogh, I said, liberated yellow. Yeah, he, he, that's what his yellow. He was the master of yellow. He's the only guy that's ever been able to master yellow. I use yellow quite often too. And oh, are you right? <laughs> I mean, I believe I use it with a lot of like, because I like to use a lot of earth tones from here in the desert where I live, where Abby lived here in the desert. By the way, like I said it. Today's the first time it's rained in over a hundred days. I mean, it's so fucking dry, you wouldn't believe it. A heat wave from hell, but... Yeah, those desert colors, you know, and... Those desert flowers, by the way, most desert flowers that bloom across this Great Basin Desert, they're yellow. Good, beautiful yellow. And people want to fucking kill them, they spray poison all over and kill them and grow fucking grass. And the idiots is green. I'm so sick of looking this fucking fake green, what lawns are, you know, Again, I was Rabbi. He was such a purist. He was so organic. He was so authentic. He was the king. You know, if, the, if we had, you know, Tim to Christopher and people like that try to say they're like, they're not Abby. They're not even close to fucking Abby. You know, to Christopher is, boy, he is. I love the kid, but he's no Edward Abby. Edward Abby was a fucking artist. I mean, he, in Pennsylvania, writing, I mean, you even read his early stuff. And Stegner was so... Stegner could have lived anywhere he wanted, by the way. Another artist, you think about these guys, they were artists. Stegner, a lot of people don't know this about Stegner. When he came out of Canada, him and his dad were his little boy. They were stopped in Helena, Montana, the Great Falls, I believe. And he got, he went out and got, you know, mowing people's lawns. He only had like three people with more lawns. One of them was Charlie Russell, the Western artist. I mean, so these people were all artists. And boy, did they get it. Oh, they got it, and they shaped culture. Like I said, that was a required reading in the seventh grade here. He goes to Supermax for that book now. I mean, by the way, it's a little teeny book. You know, I've been reading it to my grandson. It's, it's, it's such what a book? cool book. What are you reading? Young people. What's that? What book are you reading to your grandson? The Monkey Ranch Gang. They wow. love that book. My little grandson loved that book because it has characters in it, you know. And I skip over the swear words for them, you know. Yeah. But I don't know why I do that. You know, they get it from me anyway and everybody else. But they get it, you know. To try to shelter children from the reality is wrong. You know, you've got to shelter them and nurture them from 
you know, they really should be nurtured from watching Fox News and these hairspray phonies and these plastic emails. That's who they should be sheltered from. I mean, that's, look what, it, look what it's grown us into. By the way, me and my grandson was watching Sesame Street the other morning. I, I can remember the first day that it started. I love that. I love, there's still good stuff out there. PBS does great stuff. But these people bombarded, I mean, we're bombarded with these newscaster types that talk all night, so let's, uh, the, the, the Pacific Ocean is being nuclear destroyed, it's a genocide, let's check the news. Uh -huh. You know, I'd be with flip his fucking lid, I, I could see him. You know, but what are those guys? Well, you can't do that because we flipped that, we made that against the law. I mean, if you do any of these things even close to what these guys did, this culture has no respect for art, none. The United States has no, ill, has no respect for fucking artists. They have no respect for the fucking earth. They have no respect for the fucking mother earth whatsoever, none, none. You know, Cobain's line, what's Cobain's line? Nature is a whore, in bloom. There's another one who's an environmentalist, people don't know. Kurt Cobain was an environmentalist. You listen to the lyrics, in bloom. You know, people don't know what to bloom, that's when the animals in the east. You know, the earth, oh yeah, it's in heat, and heat. Nature is a whore. You know, what the hell are we doing to it? What the fuck? I mean, this is all we have for time and all eternity. And I haven't got it. He wrote about it over and over, but that was in the 70s. So now I'm showing. I, I'm standing. In front, I'm standing in front of the camera, and uh, you know, as you're talking, I'm realizing that what you and I are doing is uh, it's never been done before. Uh, we just briefly talked about this before we started this video. Uh, this talk about the fact that what you call social media is extending into our private spaces. You are in your space, I'm in my space, I'm making a painting, we're hooked up together, and your comments are creating, in a way, my painting. And this is... Well, it's a powerful, it's amazing, it's never been done before. I mean, it's so perfect for the information age. The information age is the most powerful thing ever invented in the history of humanity, except for maybe nuclear. You know, on the negative, so you think about it, it's the counter to negative, negative evil. This is powerful. People are behind the curve on the information age. It is, you know, if people want to use it quirky and goofy. It's not quirky and goofy. You know, doctors are starting to use it. They should have been using it the whole time. Attorneys, you know, the professional type. You know, but as far as information, artists, artists, artists. You know, it's not just digital art. You know, that's what everybody tried to kidnap it as digital art. It's what we're doing right here, right now. It's like I said, I mean, here I'm in Utah, standing anywhere. I'm standing right out here. It's raining for under my beautiful, incredible Wasatch. You're in, up there in Canada, we're painting, and we're collaborating. Or, what word do you use? The co cooperation. No, no collaboration. Get out of collaboration. I forget. Cooperation. Cooperation. Fuck collaboration. Fuck collaboration. collaboration. Yeah, fuck collaboration because I don't want to yeah. be fucked with. I get you. Yeah, I don't want to be fucked with in my stuff. I don't want to be meddled with, but I'll cooperate. Yeah. I'll cooperate with yeah. you any day, but I don't want to be <laughs> fucked with with my stuff. And my stuff, you know, as far as post a lot of people, I invented it on 10, 10, 10. By the way, I invented it in the same library that Edward Abbey wrote a lot of his stuff. I'm going to write a book about that library. Edward Abbey was in that library all the fucking time, in the same fucking library at the university. Was that Ogden? In the Is that same place Stegner. I invented it in the same place he wrote a lot of his stuff. So I think it's on 10, 10, 10, and I want people to collaborate with me. You know, that's what I say, post Stegner, and I have that big logo, your logo here. Yeah, I may invent it, but it's, it's, it's so much bigger than I will ever be. It's a fucking seat. I want people to take and I don't want people to profit from them. And I want people to give me credit for coming up with the idea and doing me all these fucking videos of mine, calling out Fukushima and this other one. But I want people to run with it. I want them to do whatever they want with it and grow it, especially young people. That video that was tagged by you by that woman in Scotland, by the way. She is gorgeous. She's beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, that, that video is so perfect. She has married post ignorance. Just, you look at that piece of art she did, it's so uh, it's so organic, but it speaks, it's metaphors. Boy, does she get my movement. Yeah, you know, that's what it is. And you know, go with it. I love it. Yeah, sure. Her, name, uh, her her YouTube name is Lorna Too Funky. Lorna Too Funky. 
Yeah, that day, you know, it's called Post It and it's free radicals, you know, and that's what we're up to. You know, and we found each other via the internet. I don't know how, but we were both doing these things before Fukushima happened, both of us. Yeah. You know, I, I used to think, this fucking crazy, whacked out fucker up in Canada sends me this shit in the mail and I get this shirt. Why I'm in critical, critical condition. In the hospital, almost dead. And it says, dead man standing. I'm like, to my, I looked at that shirt and I said, either this fucking guy has got a lot of fucking balls and he's a fucking, got to be some sick motherfucker. Or this guy gets it, one of the two. So I started checking this guy out. And it was, you know, you, Thomas Ackerman. I'm like, oh, this guy, this ain't no insult. This, you know, because I get people all the time, ain't you dead yet? You know, people, people are actually rooting for me to die because I soberly took chemo and smoked weed away. That's brutal. But the tumors were so... That's brutal. I, you're telling... Yeah, you're, you're pe people. You're telling me that people actually sent you while you're while you're on your fucking deathbed. They say, "Why aren't you dead yet?" Yeah, including Chris Busby. I said the email. Oh fuck! Now, I guess I intimidated Chris Busby somehow. So you should see the email. I had to calm my uncle down. My uncle's, you know, and that's kind of fell flat. That's fighter pilot. He's an old man, but meaner fuck. I had to calm him. He's seen those emails. He's gonna fly over there. And I said, "No, no, yeah, fuck that guy." You know, so, oh yeah, I got thousands of them. I get hate now every fucking day. People hate the truth, you know, but to be, to tell the truth, the truth is, the truth is hard. You know, the, the, in this society, it wasn't in past societies, people can't accept the truth because they've been posturing and groomed into their whole policy, false lie. They're styrofoam, fake walk mansions. They're fucking fake white. They're pseudo de facto fucking careers, which they do nothing. So, just like the marine biologists. I've learned. People, in, they don't do anything. They got jobs and titles. But they, to do work, they don't work. So you say it best when you say, we have to do the work. Well, that's what you and I are doing. We're doing the fucking work. We're doing the Fukushima work. You and I, Jan, you know, she's doing the Fukushima work. Pink, you know, Shane Russell, fucking uh, Patrick Henry. We're doing the fucking work. This isn't 9-11. You know, where they come out, Namely Wolf, and, and, you know, Chris said just comes back after the fact. Oh, buy my bed, okay? Now, we did it in real time as it was unfolding. You and I, in are, real, we did the fucking in real, work. In real studios, in real studios, in real places, in real houses, with real people, not groomed, as you say. This is a real movement. It's, it's grassroots. Very real. It's grassroots. It's grass as solid as the earth as it gets. What's more solid as the earth than this? Countering the fucking nuclear mass murdering. I mean... Nuclear isn't pollution, it's going to be something lying around. I mean, the golf is easy, as evil as the golf was, and it's evil what that fucking golf is. It'll take hundreds of years. This is nuclearism. This is the wiping out of all of humanity over time and all eternity in some form. Now, who knows what it'll be? They're fucking countering that. What's more loving, spiritual? What is more important than to try to protect her, Mother Earth? That's what we're doing. That's what Abby was doing. Edward Abby fought to He loved her. Fucking mother. He understood it was his mother. He got that so hard. He was in symphony. I spoke at my father-in-law's funeral, by the way. I read a bunch of Abby stuff, and they were friends. And I told him these men knew how to live in symphony with their environment. They were, and they were, and they weren't soft three hundred. They were meaner than fuck. These fuckers just fight you on the drop of a fucking hat. They were brutal fucking men. I mean, two tours in fucking. It has kitchen in Korea. These fuckers were wicked, mean motherfuckers. So they <laughs> loved Mother Earth. They were in two, and they fought for her. It's their mother. I mean, why do people don't get it that this fucking club, we live, it's our mother. It's all, and we're all, we're all brothers and sisters, not religiously, because of the jet stream. We're connected. We are all brothers and sisters, and we're all in this fight, whether you want to be, and they're fucking not. And that's what your art is. That's your series of art, by the way. With the counter to, we're all. You say it, I say it. We'll all use 32 because Campbell's used 32 cans, the perfect number. Well, we use 33 because it's the imperfect number. Because nuclear fall is imperfect. And men aren't, then the people that run nuclear fallout are imperfect. And that's the flaw with it, which we said that was the, I, I said that was the flaw with it then. Men have to still run these fucking things. There's the flaw. Edward Abbey said that. Yeah, they all said it. Einstein said it. Sokolov said it. Oppenheim. Men still have to run it. We're imperfect creatures. But we don't even try to fucking live in symphony. We, you know, nature is a horrible thing. All, we want to rape, sewage, Dick Cheney, fucking oligarch. I mean, you think about those creepy motherfuckers. 
be wacky and you fucking just extract any way from her any way you can. For what? For what? The okay. Future generation? All right. Now, now I'm telling you, uh, Abby, as he's coming out, he's, uh, he almost looks like he's got a tear in his eyes. He's listening to you. He's getting a tear in his eyes. He's getting a tear in his eyes. I'm looking at him right now as he's coming you know, think out. Think about that. You know what Abby's did? The number one commercial in the United States. Literally, this is how socially conscious we were. We have men like Edward Abbey about the environment. The number one issue in the United States was littering. There were signs everywhere. If you look at, if somebody seen somebody even throw a cigarette butt out in Utah, you'd get the fuck beat at it. There's a thousand dollar fine in 1970. And think about the logo. The number one ad campaign in America was the Indian with the teardrop running down his cheek. <laughs> That's it was right. We were socially conscious in the 70s before these soft so-called pre-huggers, these fucking calling and having organic and a latte and fucking kidnapped our movement. You know, the environmentalists, they, I mean, I, I love Carol Gallagher, by the way. She fought. She said, Kevin, you talked me out into coming out of retirement, by the way. She's coming out of retirement. She's forgotten more than all of us fucking know. They were there, but they were so few. Under the cloud, Richard Miller, which she assisted on that book. And I would like to say this to anybody. Abby and Richard Miller knew each other personally. They were fucking buddies. Read Richard Miller's Under the Cloud. Watch that. He was a scientist. Look at the data he compiled. And so it's there. And I think Abby would be, like you said, I, I, the teardrop is so perfect. To, oh, they would all cry. I mean, if they come home, I mean, I could just see their hands over their face just broke down crying. It's like the, 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 the sadness, as, like, as this is coming along, there's a profound, profound, profound sadness. And you know, we're in, yeah. we're in, a, we're in a real shitter. We're in a tough time. We're in a really... We're in, people, people think you can, I mean, you know, you watch my... You know I'm perfectly healthy and strong I was until October 13, 2011. Yeah. I don't give a fuck who you are. And by the way, Edward, Abby lived in Moab. Okay, that's where they're trying to build the new castle of the nuclear power, which, by the way, I put the stop to that. Our governor, Dirty Hoodie, told me to fuck off right to my face. That's how intense I've been with him. With a central line hanging out of my doctor, who's, I mean, my doctor is anti nuclear because they know nuclear causes cancer. But, by the way, Moab, to all you people, wake up, fuckers, in southern Utah, it is the cancer capital of the world. Of the world. 300 open air tests reigned over southern Utah. And, Everybody forgot what Tony had been forgot. It's killing more people today than it did in the 50s or the 60s. When you talk about downwinders, you cannot talk in past tense. You have to talk in present tense and in the future for at least 24,500 years. Is the cancer, and that's where Abby lives. Now, Abby, to the soft, just went on him. He was pretty young, but you got to realize the guy drank two fists of whiskey a day. <laughs> you know what he's related? I love his one quote. He says, I'm an expert in marriage. You know, ask me. And she would have tried it seven times. I don't know if it was six or seven, but... You know, by the way, this woman who I know really well, she was at our university the other day, very close friends with Abby. Me and her had a great talk the other day. And, you know, she, she's off. And everybody in Utah knew him. He knew everybody knew him. I mean, he was so connected with people. I mean, keg parties were legal in those days. He'd show up at keg parties. You know, that's the kind of guy he was. Yeah. And you just look like some fucking, you know, it looks like a fucking normal fucking, you know, hillbilly fucking around. You don't know his, you know, scraggy hair, fucking beard, a beat up fucking truck, you know, with a fucking crushed up beer can in one hand and a fucking half sip of whiskey. That was normal around here. That's the way Utah works. You know, it's, it, this, these people were wilderness lovers, you know, this is before Utah grew up. I don't know, anybody who's never been here. I mean, it is. I mean, the landscape in Utah is beyond spectacular. It is, that's what's so sad about it. The most beautiful landscape, maybe on Earth, is across this state. That's why I don't believe. And these fuckers have poisoned it with nuclear fallout. So it's this beautiful thing that's like, I guess it's like a really beautiful female, if you don't know anything about it. You know, maybe you're in love with, and she's, you know, robbing your bank account. Uh, uh, robbing more than that, robbing your entire future. Okay, now I want you to have a really good thought because I need in that, I think you know, uh, I, I sent you that Abbey portrait, uh, pencil portrait, and he's got a shirt with this funny looking thing on it. I, yeah. I'm, I'm stuck now. I, I, I need a color for the shirt. 
Because okay, I got oh, this sort of green. Be, it's gotta be orange, doesn't it? Yeah, you like the orange idea? Is did he no, wear because, orange? Orange is the leukemia color, and orange is so orange is a powerful, powerful color. That's why it was picked for leukemia. It is leukemia color, and I mean, you think about yeah, he died of a softest, but all of his group. You're died seeing of cancer. Every one of his friends died of cancer. They all died of fucking cancer. You're seeing it as an orange. Yeah, I'll tell you a great story. Right here by the pond where I shoot those videos. God, this is long. I was a young, young hippie. Well, I wouldn't call me a hippie. I had this long blonde hair. I was a really tough kid. I was a progressive, but I was an artist. I had this beautiful, crazy blonde hair. I had, you know, and the girls I was hanging around with. But I think that's what Abby used to kind of hang around with the freaking art group, too, because we had all the beautiful girls. The beautiful girls in those days were environmental. They had the flowers in there. They were the easy set of Utah was, the beautiful females in Utah were everywhere and they were hardcore environmentalist chicks. I mean, if you come out wearing hairspray douchebags like they are now, <laughs> these girls were spitting their face. They were into the art, they were, they were into the freaking environment. They, they really did all wear flowers in their hair. So, uh, here's Abby and I over there watching the fireworks show. <laughs> and Drake, and he passed out on the fucking blanket. These girls were fucking you know, wildflowers all over in his hair. Why he was passed out. You know, I think, you know, because of his group, you know, I think it was his wife who actually did it, whoever that was at the time, he had so many of them. But, you know, wakes up with these flowers in his hair and he kept them in his hair. You know, he would laugh and fucking thought it was great, you know. I'm doing the art. I'm doing the art. Everybody, read, just read, read quotes. Wow. With one liners. I mean, fuck, what wit? What a fucking mind he had. He was a fucking genius. I'm doing the orange. I'm doing it. All right. And he, uh, and not only was he a fucking genius, that's what people don't mistake. They're mistaken these so called people that we look like, you know, maybe we don't have perfect hair spraying on them. We, we hijacked to thinking what intelligent was and not intelligent. These songs of you, people like Abby, they're the brilliant fucking people that are out there. Anybody who's pro war is a fucking moron. I mean, we, you know how anti-war he was, of course. I mean, the, they were all mom guys. His, his old crew was fucking mom guys and fucking Korea. Hell's Kitchen's fucking guys. The Korea Stottles in the fucking, that was his clan. They were fucking peace activists. I mean, and you think about it, what was ever at his purest core? He was the ultimate humanitarian. He was a fucking humanitarian. Pure. You know, we ought to say, oh, you know, Nelson Mandela, all these guys, you know, Mother Teresa, you know, these little, yeah, they were great, you know, in terms of one. They weren't fucking Edward Abbey. Edward Abbey was up the court. He was a pure, hardcore, organic, real, real, real humanitarian. And he was willing to fucking fight him. He says, you know, that's what I am. I'm not afraid of these fuckers. And that's what we have to be. Not, you know, he didn't get himself thrown in jail. He did it legally. But he, boy, he, he did it through literature. He did it through his art. And I'll tell you what, oh, dude, his, his art was so fucking powerful. His art is so responsible for so much of the, you know, great environmental movement of the 1970s. The environmental movement of the 1970s in this country was a powerhouse. It was gigantic. And then, of course, here comes, you know, the 80s, you know, 86, Chernobyl. And uh, that's why I use, by the way, you see, that's why I use I Live to Tell. That was written in 1986, and that was not written for Madonna, for, I love that movie, I love that song. That was, he wrote that, what's his name, Patrick, wrote that song for the movie in Oregon, for Australia. Here we go, of course, it's smart, we were born to set this right, the country and western version of Hamlet. There's some rule for you, here's some rule for me, and here's some for you, but you must wear your rule with a difference. That's powerful shit. Literature, literature, literature. Edward Abbey, literature. I think I got him. I think I got him, Kevin. I think I got right. him. This was okay, like, I, I don't know. I got to go. It's actually rain. I want to stand out in the rain. It hasn't rained in 100 years. And see if I can get, you know, some of this nuclear rain in my fucking, on my head. See what it does to me. Kevin, I want to thank you because I think I got him. I got, I got the uh, modern day. Powerful pain. I can't wait to fucking see it. Modern day, not. modern day Braveheart. Your series is incredible. I'm, I'm hoping... That work, that work is turning out incredible. I'm hoping to have 16, 16 of them. Uh, I, you know I'm doing them in duplicates. They're, they're coming out as doubles. 
and uh, it's yeah, part of the that. process, which is kind of interesting hey, because. You know, we and I have worked on this together the whole time. You know, we used the suit paintings. We started this out with sketches hanging on the clothesline. I used my cloth once you used your grinds. And, you know, people that show up on the thing, it's just, you know, we're trying to use people that are smaller than those people who really make a difference in a really pure, organic way, like Adam. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know. Modern day I'm Braveheart. Really excited about it. Modern day Braveheart. I had that. I had that impulse on the blue and the black and the Isn't that amazing? modern day. And I got. I got him a orange shirt. I got the orange shirt. And I got him. I, I got him now. I think I got him. Uh, it took like uh, I think it was about a half an hour. This is one of my uh, uh, faster paintings because I was trying to keep up with you. As you're going, you're going on and on, and you're 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 uh, ratcheting well, up. I don't want to say about this because you know people think I go on and on. Yeah, fucking me, I go on and on because you know what? We've been smashed down. Our voice hasn't been able to be heard for 30, 40 fucking years. That's right. We need to go on and on. What do we all say? As you're, I love people that fucking talk a lot. He says they're the fucking best. That's what he always aspired to be. That's the only true thing you ever see. He so he really honestly did want to be a talk show host. And <laughs> he, he understood that people like us were being we didn't have a voice. People won't listen to us because we we're a rage against the machine. Yeah, and I, and this is this is perfect because as you're as you were going. As you were talking, I was getting animated and I was putting it together and I think it's working. I think it's working. You know, sometimes in a painting, you hit it, you don't hit it, you never know. But uh, I think this really worked, Kevin. I like it. And I'm going I'm, oh, I'm to... Thank you. And I, by the way, anybody who's on this fucking list and if they don't like it, who gives a fuck, number one? <laughs> but, I mean, fuck, we don't ask. I mean, fuck, why would we? But I can guarantee you, fucking Edward Addy, like I said, I knew him. And he loved me, by the way. When I was a heathen, he used to shake his fucking head at me. So did, you know, the whole, his whole clan used to shake their head out of me and say, what the fuck, this kid? <laughs> you know, he would hug us. I guarantee he would hug us. You know, Kevin, in all of this uh, tribulation and difficulty, we got to find somewhere within each other the joy, the pleasure. It's what I talk oh, about. I love this. I have so much joy in all this because it's the art, and art makes me happy. There you go. Visual art. My videos, when I see, I, I tell my daughters all the time, they can take everything in the fucking world from me. I walk into the fucking moment, and I stand in front of that painting where the papa painted that little boy with the fucking, with the horse. That's right where I go. My fucking mind races in so much fucking joy just looking at it. When I look at beautiful fucking great art, and I can identify fucking art. That's why I identified you. I mean, I love people to try to fucking, you know, get into fucking bed with me on posters and I don't fuck no. Because I can see you know that's powerful shit. Really powerful. I, I think I, I think you, me. you know I'm Kevin this is this is I think the basis of our cooperation is that we have a fundamental feeling of wanting to enjoy each other and uh, yeah. and encouraging each other in the best parts of us. It's not like complaining and fucking sitting around oh, and no, it's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. blah. Anger. Yeah. This poetry. This, poetry exactly. Is beautiful. Exactly. And this is what people don't understand. This, the, the, the pleasure, the joy in this makes well, you want to live. Don't understand it. Go watch fucking Braveheart. Go watch Seabiscuit. I make my kids watch Seabiscuit every time they get depressed. Nice. I mean, that's... It's poetry. It's poetry is hard. It's tough. It's strong. But the one component that our art has that gives me so much joy, the truth. Yeah. It's simply the fucking truth. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the truth is righteousness. This is righteousness. Not the some religious kidnap fucking no. organized religion. It's shit. It's Fuck a organized religion. It's Fuck a organized religion in every fucking way. Thomas Jefferson. The fucking root of all evil is organized religion. Oh, they got it back then. Yeah, we're, 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 we're connecting on a level that's primeval. Uh, it's sort of like sitting around the campfire and feeling the, the absolute exaltation. You look up into the night sky and you see the stars, and it's that kind of a feeling, you know? You're that's with exactly each other. That's what Abby did every night of his life. You know that's what they did. They yeah. sat in the desert, and they camped, and they looked at the stars, and that's why he came up with his great writing. That's what they did every night. They sat on the campfire, looked at the stars, drank, listened to the fucking coyotes fucking howl. That's what they, that's what he did his whole fucking life. And he wrote next to the campfire like so many fucking great Western artists did. Yeah. You know, he might have been from Pennsylvania, 
But he was so Utah. Oh, he was so fucking Utah. You know. You know, you realize, of course, that the joy, this, this, this primeval joy has been extracted from the art these days. It's also clinical. It's also completely contrived. There's no joy left in it. It's like, what is it? What, what the hell are we looking at? Sticks and feathers on the floor. I don't know what the hell. The well, joy you know, is gone. I, I, I always put my confidence on American culture. That's why I use so many ma music. And I use lyrics and I use the poster of Fleetwood Mac and another Utah girl, by the way, Stephen Nick. And, uh... Bruce, you know, and I use that because the thumbprint, think about what music's been in the last 20 years. It's all contrived. It's all corporate. It's contrived. There's nothing organic. That's why it's so shitty. Same with art. It's all the same. There is no fucking art. Corporate fucking contrived. Contrived fucking art. Is, uh, uh, it, it will never be art. No, and you, you got these, like you call it, you call it fucking interior decorators for all of us. What's that mean, art? It's yeah. not the closest. It's the opposite of art. It's the, completely the opposite of art. The joy is gone. The joy is gone. We're putting the joy back into it. We're the putting the joy back in. Scotland. That was joy. That's joy. It's the, por the poetry of the is beautiful. It's joyful. And let me say this. I talked to one of my doctors yesterday. He says, Kevin, we teach Geneva at the university now in the nursing school. And the one nurse, one of my nurses, she's in the class. She piped her. She says, yeah, Kevin, you do know that we teach that 90% of people that get Geneva like I had, which is leukemia presenting in tumor, 90% are dead in 120 days, wow. 90%. And my daughter says, you know you're alive. And so think about my poetry of anger as I've gone along this. I'm alive. Yeah. Now what's kept me alive? Yeah. Just what you just said. Just yeah. what you said. Yeah. The beauty, the joy, the truth, the art of it. That's why I'm alive. That's the only reason I'm alive. And they've tried to hide you. Everybody's prayers, everybody's prayers, again, across social media. You know how many people pray for me? Yeah. You know people really believed in me and fought for me? Those people, and that's, that's, that's how I, across social media, across YouTube land, the whole world, they did seances on beaches for me. They saved my life because that's the truth. It's the purity of righteousness. You know, they wanted me to live, so I lived. And I think we're, uh, what in our, like I feel about myself, that if I can generate this feeling, like we talked about this Lorna Too Funky doing the video, inspiring people to feel the joy back in themselves. She said that she hasn't been inspired this way for a long time, and I think this is so important to, to, to try and bring this out in people again. And let now, them... Now, you know, we need to make sure we tell this to everybody when it comes to post ignorance. Now, free radicals are different situations. Free radicals, like you said, delivery system. Free radicals, free radicals. Post ignorance is post ignorance. Right. But in regards to post ignorance, I can't speak for free radicals. That's you. That's post right. Is we that's we right. can talk about it, but in the case of post ignorance, I will say this to all artists. I don't give a fuck what it looks like. I mean, if you look at my one I did with the throwing the powder on the fucking when painting with the soup, how ugly is How fucked up is that painting? That's what, I mean, who cares what it looks like? Oh, it looks like a child. It looks like that's what we want. We want to go back to our core. Her painting. You know, look at she did those rough sketches with just those stick figures of those two people standing. This means it's, it's metaphors, and I've read yeah. you've heard me read it over and over. My definition of post ignorance. Boy, she got it. Oh, who gives a fuck what it looks like? Yeah, you know, it's what it says. It's uh, okay. what, what, what I says. okay, and what I say, what I say. This is this is really interesting. This people should really pay attention to this because most, if not everything, is intent. So if your intent is to build something that is going to carry us into the next level of our, of our abilities, our consciousness, the intent behind the work, the intent, when you, when you put that soup onto that metal thing, it's, it is an exaltation of brilliance and understanding where we are. It's, it's connected to where we are. It's not some hypothetical idiosyncratic expression. It's exactly where we are. This is, the, this is the nature of art, and people don't understand this. They say it's like my kid could do it. I get this all the time. You know, people come in my studio and say, oh, yeah, my kid could do this. Well, I say to them, you have a very low opinion of your children. That's what I say. Well, the thing is, too, and like I said, because all they're looking at is what it looks like. Yeah. They're not fucking looking into, like you said, the consciousness. That's what art is. Isn't that what art is? I mean, you think about when you sit down and draw and paint, I don't care if you're the shittiest or the best artist in the world. 
You're really drawn out of your subconscious. So when it draws out of the subconscious, you let it go. It says everything about the artist. It's a blotter test, not just for us, but the people looking at it. How fucked up is the purple? It's a blotter test. That person's fucked up. Because they said the same thing about fucking Monet. I mean, come on, you know, it ended up being... Monet went from fucking what he was to be a... They, they allowed him to drape the only bitches going into Paris and fucking women. Yeah. You know, think about that. Uh, uh, an artist is going to be able to fucking drape the fucking Brooklyn Bridge and fucking women shut down commerce for... And they were all over. It's different now. Oh, it ain't fucking different now. No, it's not. The fucking center of the economic world was Paris. Like New York is now. It's so fucking different. That's... And people fucking accuse him of finger paintings in the early days. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's... It, yeah, well... Because yeah. they don't get the meaning, but... Over time, people fucking get the meaning. Now, I don't get worried, Tom, that there aren't people making the art. What I get worried is people interpreting the art. You always had certain groups in Paris and certain people that, even though they may have been oligarchs and rich, their children or somebody broke across and could identify and interpret their art. Peggy Duke and on and on and on and on. Where the fuck are they? Yeah. Yeah, we need the Guggenheims to come on board. We need the Guggenheims. Need someone who can identify some kind. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Shut up. My art. Yeah. Somebody, I can't find any art who's got any fucking meaning. Yeah. I mean, I have, I, I look at reflectionary art, which I term contemporary art is not the reflectionary. As post ignorance, I say, popism died 3 11 11. Now, they would say, oh, popism died a long time. No, also popism come out of it. Then neo-popism come out of it. But it's still popism. And it fucking died. And post-ignorance is the counter to all of that. It's just what the word says. Post-ignorance is counter ignorance. If Warhol was alive, you know, as he was doing his popism with Marilyn Monroe, with, uh, you know, Elvis, with all these E.D. Sedgwick, uh, it's not that now. I mean, even though he was making mockery of it all, he was choosing these incredible, brilliant, sexual, amazing fucking people in their own right. Incredible artists in film and act. Now look what we have. That's fucked. The, the modern day fucking popism creature compared to Edie Sedgwick, compared to Elvis Presley, compared to Marilyn Monroe, that's like comparing a fucking, uh, you know, a Bugatti to a 1972 Pinto. It's the girl with the tongue. It's the girl with the tongue. I think if he wouldn't have died in Ackman, I think if Warhol would not have died, this would have never continued. I think he would have put a stop to it, to his art. Yeah. But nobody picked it up, and these people that picked up off the Warhol, you know, Russell May made the beautiful drawing of American Graffiti, that album cover. By the way, I'm going to go to that building when you and I are there. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's a Warhol poacher. Oh, I'm he's looking a, forward for you to give me a little bit of a tour of where you're walking around down uh, there. We'll, we'll get into some art while we're there. It's amazing fucking art. But it, that, and that, anybody, that anybody you know, want... When he wrote the song, with the soul, and, you know, American Gra Physical Graffiti, that album cover is a brilliant, 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 amazing piece of art. And, Ke and Kevin, you got uh, people can come along. People can come along. It's well, not... They're going to come along. Yeah. We have a lot of people that are showing up. Okay. And we're going to talk... We're not going to talk just about art. We're not going to talk just about culture. We're going to talk about why and how we put a stop to nuclearism. Yeah. You know, really, that's, what that's what it's all about. That's what it's about. That's what it is. It's, it's, it's intellectually immoral. Yeah. It's the Blue Edward Abbey, how to stop this nuclearism. That's what yeah, it's I all about. Blue. That's what it's about. I got, I got it. I can't wait to see it. I nailed them. I nailed them. Thanks, Kevin. I nailed them. And uh, I'll finish them off. I really do love your work. I really appreciate everything you We're doing, We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay. okay. Bye.